am a big Terminator fan, as I know many of you are. And damn it, I wish I had better news for you. But uh, I don't. Oh, it's so sad. Everybody was saying for like a hot minute that this was like the new T2. Uh, I saw a couple of people try to say that it was like The Force Awakens. Um, which wasn't good. So, okay. All right. So, all right. James Cameron has been doing a lot of trash talking lately. We've all seen it, right? We all might be focused on Scorsese and Coppola now, but before them it was Jim. And Tim Miller got kicked off of Deadpool. Therefore, both of them have a lot riding on this movie. Jim Cameron keeps having a lot of, a lot of close saves by not actually directing these films, so they don't quite count towards him, uh, towards his, his legendary run, right? <laughs> uh, get back in the director's chair. Where are these Avatar movies? All right, so. Maybe he's focused too much on them to do a good job. You know, James Cameron coming back to Terminator was supposed to fix everything. But it turns out he, he makes just as weak a Terminator movie as everybody else. And I think it's particularly tragic or hilarious, depending where you stand, that Cameron and Miller are actually the film's biggest problems. Because the cast is great. And I'm not just talking Arnold and Linda. I'm talking across the board here. Mackenzie Davis, Gabriel Luna, and even Natalia Reyes. Her character might be pointless, but she's pleasant to have around. Okay, so first we'll talk about the myriad of problems, and then we'll console the cast with lots of praise. All right, so problems. My biggest problem, and I suspect it will be everyone's biggest problem because it's just that big, is the opening scene of the film, which obviously is a real problem because it casts a pall over the rest of the movie. So it's basically, without spoilers, a giant f you to T2. And it turns out to be only the first step in totally throwing away the Terminator mythology and replacing it with what I would basically call Terminator light. Like if you're gonna replace it, maybe you should replace it with something good, right? Now, speaking of light, I ended up not caring for the new Terminator design in the long run, uh, AKA the Rev-9. And like its name, it's simply not as cool as the T-800 or T-1000. And you know, the reason I call it light is that it's not as heavy or as substantial as those Terminators. And in some cases, doesn't look particularly human, which robs the Terminator of its impact, both physically and emotionally. That haunting effect of the original is gone. Uh, as for two Terminators in one, I still have no idea why anyone would build that because there's never a scene where they work together. So you don't really get the, you don't really get to see the benefit of a Terminator having a partner in the field, uh, which seems like a missed opportunity to me. You'd think there would be one cool scene where you would like, oh, that's why you want a ter two Terminators working together. Cause I gotta say, ones always seem to be very effective. So I don't know why, you know, it's two. But on that note, there's the lack of action in the movie, in a Tim Miller movie. I mean, I said this when I w reacted to the first trailer. I was like, Tim Miller, why do you think that I hired you? It wasn't for your storytelling skills. It was for your action sequences. That's what this guy's famous for. And this movie has very little action. It plays more like a Terminator streaming series than a big action blockbuster where they're like, we can't afford big action sequences. And I'm like, but you can, where are they? Um, and when there are action sequences, they're way too short. Like you've seen most of them in the trailers. Uh, and they have too many close-ups. Uh, so there's a distinct lack of action choreography. Like you're like, action is happening, but I'm, I'm missing it. You're not seeing any of it. Which is very frustrating, particularly considering all the other action sequences that are so popular today. Uh, another problem, the VFX. I know, because as I've been saying, I recently rewatched Terminator 2, made in 1991. And never once did I, did I doubt the VFX in that movie. Occasionally I was like, these are amazing for 1991. Here though, Gabriel Luna's digital double constantly took me out of the movie, where I'm like, isn't this like a professional film? Uh, he looks as fake as he did in the first trailer. Remember, we were like, oh, maybe they're not done. They were done. They were d done in many senses of the word. All right, so also like the T-1000, he can morph into other people. And while he morphs a shirt onto his body in one scene, he never once morphs into another person on camera. Not once, come on. All right, so then I hate to say it because they all did a great job. 
but this film is just too female centric. Like there are too many characters, but you get the feeling that the movie just wanted to keep adding women to the film. They're like, let's put another woman in there. And I have to say as a woman, it is cool to see such awesome female action heroines, but it would be cooler if fewer of them had more to do. Uh, I'm so sorry, Nat uh, Natalia Reyes. You might be the sweetest, but you were also the weakest link. So I would have actually, I would have actually cut her from the movie, to be honest with you. I can't talk about it too much because I don't want to give away spoilers. We'll discuss it a little. I mean, I don't know. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Um, there's so many other things they could have done. This is what they chose. Um, but we'll talk about it a little bit more in the spoiler review. Uh, I liked the Mexico stuff, though, quite a bit. We recently, we've been talking about representation of Mexico, and I thought this film did a very nice job, even if it was extremely wink-wink, right, uh, politically. I did, though, like the commentary of a factory that was moved to Mexico, you know, taking, you know, quote-unquote, you know, the, the discussion of jobs taken away from Americans, right, and other countries. But then even the people of Mexico found their jobs being taken by robots. I was like, that's a really interesting discussion. But here it's more of a fleeting thought, and I think they could have done a lot more with that. Just like female characters, again, I think Terminator Dark Fate shouldn't feel it needs to check all the boxes, but should check just a few boxes really well. Uh, I thought Mexico, though, was portrayed very nicely, especially its people. And there's a quick scene in a pharmacy, which uh, I thought was particularly well done. Linda Hamilton does an excellent job picking up exactly where she left off. She's fantastic. Uh, I mean, a couple of times you're like, I don't know, Linda. But then you're like, oh, you nailed it. She looks just as cool and is just as badass as she was in 1991. And they also give her one really nice emotional beat. I was like, ah, that was a good one. As for Arnold, there really isn't anywhere left to go with the T-800. But this movie tries its best. It's kind of clever in what it comes up with, and at the very least, it gets some genuine laughs out of it. Like some really, actually very good laughs. Uh, Arnold, this is, I think, one of the best things I've seen him do in quite some time, even if his part is very small. Uh, he's throughout like the second half of the movie, but uh, he doesn't get as much to do. Uh, I, I will say, though, that none of the women in the film, film were Mary Sue's. Uh, you know, Arnold's character was important to the group, and I thought that was very nice. Uh, very much a team. And Mackenzie Davis, uh, I think a standout in Blade Runner 2049, among other projects, she really does a phenomenal job here. She's so good. I would think this would be a breakout role for her, but considering the quality of the overall film, I don't know if that will happen. But she deserves it. She's great. She, uh, she plays an enhanced human from the future, and she makes for an extremely convincing action uh, hero and has that relatable quality that serves the best uh, movie action heroes so well. Gabriel Luna is also excellent and does a great job playing a cold, unforgiving Terminator. He has a lot of charisma, enough to make you interested in his character even with hardly any dialogue or particularly cool fighting sequences or VFX sequences. So there are nice moments in Terminator Dark Fate, uh, but I just couldn't get over the opening scene, even though it did have the best VFX in the movie, I have to say. But it was just, I found it so offensive that I just couldn't, I couldn't get over it. Uh, and the movie didn't try very hard to get me over it. So in fact, the whole movie to me seems pointless and there isn't even an end credit scene to at least get you excited about what this might be setting up in the future, right? All right, so that's my non-spoiler review of Terminator Dark Fate. Please don't, people are already spoiling it online. It opens uh, this week in Europe. So it's gonna be tough to avoid the spoilers, but um, I think the one that everyone's gonna share is that opening, which is again, just the, like the first 10 minutes of the movie. But um, when you find out what it is, either by seeing the movie or someone unfortunately ruins it for you, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so again, share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.